Alright guys, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu alaikum wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. So alhamdulillah, we're here now on Juz 19. Uh, getting a little better, inshallah ta'ala, so just bear with me, hang in there, inshallah. I appreciate all the, the people that I've been following. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, just a few days more, and I'll be back to my full uh, full self, inshallah ta'ala. So, um, for now, though, we're going to try to go through Juz 19. Again, uh, I'll see what I can do, inshallah ta'ala, in terms of time. If I feel like I need to give in at uh, 10, 15 minutes, then I will. Um, but we'll do our best, inshallah ta'ala, to really at least give you guys some overview, some roadmap, inshallah, to understanding this juz. Uh, one thing as well, by the way, is that, um, inshallah, once Ramadan is over, what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually re-record uh, these previous few juz where my voice is not the best so that we can have a full scope, inshallah ta'ala, so that hopefully I can provide that, you know, for you guys for the future Ramadans as well. And even outside of Ramadan, it's always good to have a roadmap of the Quran and to understand the direction of the Quran and to understand, um, you know, just the, how to navigate the different uh, chapters of the Quran and things of that sort. So <clears throat> don't worry, this is just a temporary fix, inshallah, just so you can continue to follow along in Taraweeh and follow along with your khatma. And then afterwards, inshallah, you'll have a full uh, roadmap. So, Juz 19, if you remember the way that we started, or the way that we ended yesterday, um, at the end of Surah Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who the true believers are. So, the end of Surah Nur is very much so like the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, um, you know, gives a full description of how the believers are. And in Surah Al-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms how those believers are at the end of Surah Al-Nur. Uh, Surah Al-Mu'minun focuses on how Iman manifests itself, faith manifests itself within a person. And then Surah Al-Nur focuses on how faith manifests itself in society. So when the individual uh, avoids, um, you know, corruption of wealth, avoids, uh, you know, following their desires, when an individual controls their private parts, when an individual is just with their captives, when an individual is uh, humble in their prayers and purifies their tongue, then it stops many of the ills that are mentioned in Surah Al-Mu'minun of immodesty and slander and ill treatment of the slaves and the captives and so on and so forth. So the idea here is that this is the translation, this is the transition that we find from Surah Al-Mu'minun into Surah Al-Nur. And Surah Al-Nur also makes a mention of the hypocrites and those who, uh, who show a sense of belief, who display a sense of Iman when it's beneficial to them in this world. But then as soon as they're put in a situation where being a mu'min, being a believer, is not beneficial to them in this world, then they quickly retreat from that iman. Surat, the next surah is Surat Al-Furqan. And Surat Al-Furqan continues in, in, in the same way in terms of theme and tone, but it's a different time of revelation. Uh, surah Al-Furqan is actually a mid-Meccan surah. And in fact, these surahs that we're about to go through, they're mid-Meccan surahs. They're in the middle of the Meccan period. Uh, the ones that we're just finishing are really towards the end of the Mecca period. So this is mid Meccan surahs where the Prophet ﷺ is warning the people of rejection. The persecution has become, you know, severe to an extent, but it's not to the extent that it would be at the end of uh, at the end of Mecca. So one of the things, one of the constant themes that we find within mid Meccan surahs is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala constantly alludes to the regret of the disbelievers and the hypocrites on the Day of Judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focuses more on that, their regret for missing out on the revelation. Towards the end of Meccan Qur'an, the theme seems to be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning the people of a punishment for rejecting their prophets and rejecting their messengers and treating them <clears throat> in an inappropriate way. The mid Meccan surahs, the theme, the overwhelming theme of regret, is the regret of the people on the Day of Judgment for having missed out on the message. So I hope you guys understand the difference and you know, hopefully if you if you really focus on, uh, in fact, if you're coming across a Meccan Surah and the focus is on the punishment of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala coming upon a people, you can almost bank on the, the fact that that's a, a, a late Meccan Surah. Whereas if the focus of a Meccan Surah is on the regret of the disbelievers on the Day of Judgment, the hypocrites on the Day of Judgment, for missing out on the message, you can bank on it being um, a, a mid Meccan surah. So Surah Al-Furqan is one of the most famous surahs in that regard uh, for what it contains of mention of that regret. Um, 
and realize the hypocrites, one of the ways that the hypocrites kept themselves going is by, uh, by, by coming together and collectively belittling the message of the Prophet ﷺ. Collectively, you know, uh, pledging allegiance to their hypocrisy, basically, that they would come together and they'd say, hey, what did you think of that khutbah last night? What did you think of that? those words of the Prophet ﷺ? They would mock it and so on and so forth. The disbelievers as well, they're different from the hypocrites in Medina. Um, <clears throat> the hypocrites in Medina, uh, you know, came when the Prophet ﷺ already established himself in Medina. And in Medina, hypocrisy was in that they would actually claim to be Muslim, but then when they'd get together, they would, you know, they would, they would deny their Islam and they would wreak havoc within the Muslim community. In Mecca, it's different. In Mecca, all of these people knew that Islam was the truth and they wanted to become Muslim. They wanted to accept guidance. And when they would find an inclination to it and they'd get together and say, hey, don't you think the Quran is true? Don't you think the Prophet Sallallahu is a prophet? Then the leaders, the heads, would sway them away from that inclination towards belief once again. So I want you to, to realize the difference. In Mecca, the regret is that people felt like they were about to become Muslim. They felt an inclination. In some cases, they did accept the Prophet ﷺ privately, but then once they got together, once Abu Jahal and, and Abu Sufyan and Abu Lahab and, and you know, Uqba bin Abi Mu'ayt and so on and so forth, once they got together, <clears throat> then they collectively rejected the message once again. So the regret is that. Um, and so you find um, in, surat, uh, in Surah Al-Furqan, if you go to verse 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَيَوْمَ يَعَضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعُ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا That the day that the wrongdoer will bite his hands. And the imagery is quite powerful because, you know, when you're nervous, you usually bite your nails or you bite your fingers. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, imagine a person putting his entire fist in his mouth out of how nervous he is. يَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَذْتُ مَعُ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا And he will say, I wish I would have taken the path of the Messenger. I wish I would have been with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya waylata laytani lam attakhith fulanan khalila. Oh woe to me, I wish I had not taken that person as a friend. I wish I wouldn't have listened to that person. So they start to turn against the heads of the hypocrites and those that were taking them away from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنَ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ إِذْ جَاءَنِي وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا that that person, indeed, he led me astray from the Qur'an after it had come to me. And shaitan is ever a deserter to man in his hour of need. SubhanAllah, one of the, 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 um, one of the, the qualities of shaitan is that he deserts you in your time of need. If you remember a few surahs before in Surah Ibrahim, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving us the speech that shaitan will give on the day of judgment, and shaitan turning his back on his followers. So shaitan always deserts you in your hour of need. And that's a powerful, um, you know, that's a powerful image for us to have on the Day of Judgment, constantly reminding ourselves that shayateen, both in the uh, jinn sense and in the human sense, our friends that act as shayateen in our lives by taking us away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the Day of Judgment, they will desert us in our hour of need. And that is the greatest hour of need. It is the greatest hour uh, that, 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 uh, that, that basically the entire world and, and our entire um you know, existence revolves around. So you realize at that point that the shaitan led you astray and that those that were taking you away from the Qur'an were indeed shayateen and that you should not have been amongst the hypocrites as well. And subhanAllah, one of the most painful images that we have here, one of the most painful ayat, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا The Prophet Wasallam, who cares so much about his people, who is... And we've already covered various ayat to that regard. Um, in Surah Nisa, we mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu uh, crying more than anything else at the ayah um, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fakifa ida jitna min kulli ummatin bi shahid, wa jitna bika ala ha ulai shahid." How will it be, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we bring a witness upon every ummah and we bring a witness upon all of those ummas? How will it be for you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So we mentioned that with the Prophet ﷺ, that it made him cry so much. We mentioned the quality of the Prophet ﷺ, Azizun alayhi ma'anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. He has empathy, he cares about you in this world, and <clears throat> he's also harisun alaykum. 
He also cares about your interests in the hereafter as well. And he's ever merciful towards the believers and loving and compassionate towards the believers. So this messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is gentle, who is loving, who is compassionate, who is empathetic, and who on the day of judgment will intercede on the part of everyone and <coughs> will go forth finding his ummah, trying to find the followers of his ummah, to take them out of a difficult situation, the Prophet ﷺ has one complaint against his people. And that is, that in the قَوْمِ تَخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ I'm sorry, it seems we froze. So the only complaint is, my qawm, my people did not take this Qur'an seriously. They abandoned the Qur'an. They abandoned the Qur'an. And so subhanAllah, these surahs, if you notice, by the way, a lot of them coming up, will talk about the Qur'an and will talk about the blessing of the Qur'an and the blessing of divine guidance. Here Allah mentions the one complaint of the Messenger وسلم, against the people on the Day of Judgment, and that is that they did not take the Qur'an seriously enough. Notice that the Prophet's complaint on the Day of Judgment will not be about personal abuses towards him. We don't find in any of the ayat or any of the ahadith the Prophet وسلم, complaining about how he was treated by the people, but rather how people treated the message that he brought. Because the Messenger وسلم, lived for that message. And so this is a, a, a powerful illustration of the scene of the Day of Judgment in that regard. And then if you move on to verse 68, um, I'm sorry, uh, verse uh, 63. 63 to the end of Surah Al-Furqan, is it, it resembles very much so the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun and the end of Surah Al-Nur. Uh, Allah mentioned the quality of the believers in Surah Al-Mu'minun. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the qualities of the servants of the Most Merciful. Ibadur Rahman wa ibadur Rahman alladhina yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna wa idha khatabahum al-jahiluna qalu salama And the servants of the Most Merciful are those who walk upon the earth with ease. And when the ignorant address them harshly, they say words of peace, they respond with words of peace. That reason, the reason why they're able to respond with words of peace to the ignorant as they approach them, is because the believers have contentment from their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهُمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّهُ يُمُعْرِعُونَ So the reason why they're able to ignore those types of things is because they have peace in their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Ibadur Rahman, the servants of the Most Merciful, they tread the earth lightly and when they are addressed by the ignorant in harsh ways, they respond with words of peace. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And those who spend the night before their Lord prostrating and standing. Think about this as you're going into the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Those who spend their nights uh, in their sujood and in their, uh, you know, in their prostration and in their qiyam, in their standing. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا And those who say, Our Lord, avert from us the punishment of hell. Indeed, the punishment is ever adhering. If you realize in the previous surah, in Surah An-Nur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages the believers to forgive those that slandered them and to forgive those that caused them harm because they want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here the servants of the Most Merciful, the way that they are responding towards insults and harshness is with gentleness and kindness and peace because they want to receive that same peace and kindness and gentleness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from the punishment of the hell. Because indeed hellfire is an evil abode and a place of evil dwelling. And those who when they spend, they are neither extravagant nor are they stubborn, but instead they hold to a middle way between those extremes. In Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those who are those who uphold their covenant of charity, and here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again mentions charity. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in those who don't invoke another God beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor do they take the life of someone who's been forgiven. So the ultimate manifestation of ظلم, oppression to another human being, is to take his life. Um, nor do they commit... Uh, illegal, uh, you know, uh, acts of of of, of uh, illegal sexual acts, and in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned those who protect 
uh, their private parts. Allah subhanahu wa says, يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا So Allah mentions the person now who doesn't take to the covenant that Allah has mentioned. The torment is doubled for him on the day of res resurrection and he abides therein in disgrace. إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa says, except those who believe and rep who repent and believe and do righteous deeds. So taba, they turn back to Allah. They hold themselves to belief. Amana. Wa amina saliha. And they work good deeds. So they change the course of their lives as well. So they turn to Allah. They believed. And now they turn the course of their lives as well. They've manifested their belief in good deeds, which have replaced the bad deeds that they used to do. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He switches, He exchanges their bad deeds for good deeds. Meaning what? When a person takes shahada, when a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's the ultimate repentance, is to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In that sense, all of their sins that they've committed in the past are turned into good deeds, inshaAllah ta'ala. And on the Day of Judgment, if a person sought forgiveness for the bad deeds that they did, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn those, uh, those, those bad deeds into good deeds, inshaAllah ta'ala. وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِنَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا And whoever repents and does righteous deeds indeed turns to Allah with an accepted repentance. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّهُ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا And those who do not witness falsehood. Remember, the, the greatest falsehood that was mentioned in Surah An-Nur, which was the falsehood of the slander of Aisha رضي الله عنها. And when they pass by the evil talk or, or undignified speech, they don't get involved in things which are of no benefit to them and of no use to them. And subhanAllah in Surah Al-Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that if a person keeps himself safe from al they keep themselves safe from <clears throat> this wasteful speech, they won't fall into many of the problems that Surah Al-Nur uh, tells us about. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا and those who, when they are reminded of the, the proofs and the evidences of their Lord, they don't fall deaf, nor do they fall blind, but rather they keep themselves close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا And those who say, O oh, our Lord, grant us from amongst our wives and our offspring the coolness of our eyes and make us an example uh, for the righteous. أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَةَ بِمَا صَبَرُوا وَيُلَقَوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا Those are the ones who will be awarded the, the, the gardens for what they patiently uh, endured, the rooms in paradise for what they patiently endured, and they will be received therein with, with, with the greetings of peace, خَالِدِينَ <coughs> فِيهَا That they will remain therein forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, حَسُنَتْ مُسْتَقَرًّا وَمُقَامًا That it is a beautiful settlement and a beautiful abode. Realize when Allah spoke about hellfire, that the believers uh, are, are even making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that hellfire is an evil abode. Sa'at mustaqarra wa muqama. It's, a, it's the worst place for a person to abide in. Here Allah says He'll put you in the best place to abide in. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ مَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا دُعَاءُكُمْ فَقَدْ كَذَّبْتُمْ فَسَوْفَ يَكُونُ لِزَامَ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my Lord only pays attention to you because of your invocation to Him. But now you have in, indeed denied him, so torment will be yours forever. The idea, you know, this, this, this ayah ends off with the idea that our value in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in accordance with our iman, with our faith and our supplication, how that faith manifests itself in dua. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention to you and assigns you value when you <coughs> turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you focus yourself in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now realize, in the previous, so in Surah Al-Furqan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us the one complaint of the Prophet So we're moving into Surah Al-Shu'ara now. The one complaint of the Prophet Sallallahu on the Day of Judgment, that they did not take the Qur'an uh, seriously enough, that they abandoned the Qur'an. Look at how Surah Al-Shu'ara starts off, the next Surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ta seen meme. تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ الْمُبِينَ لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ أَلَّا يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, that these are the verses of the clear book. So the book is clear, the book is beautiful, the book is valuable, the book uh, makes a person great when they turn to that book. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ أَلَّا يَكُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ 
So this Prophet ﷺ, who we just saw so distressed by the people turning their backs on the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here, it is as if, O Muhammad Wasallam, you would kill yourself with grief because they are not believers. Meaning, this is hurting you so much, Ya Rasulullah. You care about them so much that you are literally killing yourself over their salvation and over their success. SubhanAllah, so tie that to the previous scene of the Prophet Wasallam saddened on the Day of Judgment. He cares so much about people believing that the Prophet Wasallam is going to kill himself with grief. In Surah Al-Kahf, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعُنْ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ You are so concerned that you would kill yourself over their outcome, what's going to happen with them, what's going to happen with their salvation, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to the Prophet Wasallam that you know this, this, this mercy that you have in your heart is good, but don't let it kill you. Don't let it... To, uh, take you to a point where your grief is so much that it that that it renders you ineffective, and that's a balance that a lot of us have to have to find as empaths, people that do care about other people, people that actually, you know, really really grieve for other people, or people that don't care about people at all, or people that don't find grief in other people's grief, that you care so much about other people, that you really want guidance for people and you want goodness for them in this world as well, but at the same time. You don't allow that wanting good for them to hinder your own pursuit of the mercy of the Most Merciful. So you still keep yourself dedicated and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't let yourself go astray trying to save the world. Uh, it's a difficult balance to find and it's almost impossible. Okay, it's almost impossible. Now, one of the things about Surah to shuara that is absolutely beautiful, the Prophet Wasallam is Azizun alayhi ma'anittum Right? He's so concerned about what happens to the people. And he's Raufun Rahim. He is very merciful, extremely merciful towards the believers. In Surah Al Shu'ara, the verse, Wa inna rabbaka lahu al azizur rahim. And verily, your Lord, He is truly the Almighty and the Most Merciful. This verse is repeated eight times throughout Surah Al Shu'ara. SubhanAllah. Like, Allah is constantly reminding the Prophet Sallallahu As we go through in Surah Al-Shu'ara, the stories of many of the Prophets uh, that came before, and many Prophets who wanted good for their people, but their people turned away, and as a result, their people were destroyed. So Allah mentions to us the story of Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. He mentions to us Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family, his father, and, and so on and so forth. Nuh alayhi salam and his people, Hud alayhi salam and his people, Salih alayhi salam and his people, Lut and his people, Shu'ayb and his people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all of these different things, right? All of these different Prophet stories. But Allah reminds the Prophet Sallallahu and verily your Lord, He is truly the Almighty and the Most Merciful. He is Aziz, He is the Almighty in that He doesn't need to show mercy to anyone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Most Merciful. He loves to show mercy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be merciful and no person can be more merciful than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as merciful as the Prophet sallallahu is, Allah is more merciful to His creation than the Prophet sallallahu is to His ummah. So this constant reminder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always gives extensive chances for mercy in this world and the next, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show mercy when, you know, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees fit, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, huwa al-azizu rahim It is your Lord, wa inna rabbaka, your Lord, O Muhammad Sallallahu who is Al-Aziz Al-Rahim, he is truly the Almighty, and he is truly the most merciful. So he will take care of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will take care of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being told not to, um, not to focus too much on, um, on what will happen uh, to the people because Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will not deal unjustly um, with anybody. The next surah and the last surah in this juz, it's just the beginning of the surah, or the first half of the surah, is uh, Surah An-Naml. And Surah An-Naml um, mentions, you know, uh, the, 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 stories of, the stories of Musa alayhi salam and Salih alayhi salam and Nuta alayhi salam as well. But uh, the detailed accounts of Surah An-Naml are of Dawood alayhi salam and Sulaiman alayhi salam. Why? Because Dawood and Sulaiman they were granted control, or Sulaiman Islam in particular was granted control over so much of the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this world. <coughs> so Allah mentions 
the, the call of Sulaiman and the call of Dawood and even though they had all of that powerful that power and they had the jinn and man and they had the birds at their service and so on and so forth still some people turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still that was not enough meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent guidance he sent mercy and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put the Prophet in a position where the Prophet will be in a state of power at times and that's not going to necessarily translate into everyone becoming believers so the Prophet is being told to maintain a sense of patience to maintain his dedication to continue to give the message and to continue to care about the delivery of that message to continue to have mercy on the people and love for them guidance but to also understand that Allah loves more mercy and more guidance for anyone than the Prophet and that those who will be guided will be guided and it's not necessarily about your state it's about the state of their hearts so whether you're in a state of Dawood or Sulaiman or you're in a state of Lut and Ibrahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide the believing hearts uh, to his path we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us and to put mercy in our hearts towards His creation. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to bless us with the best of this world and the next. Alhamdulillah, I made it through uh, today. So inshallah ta'ala, hopefully it's a good sign that my voice will hold up inshallah. Uh, once my voice is strong enough, then I'll, I'll, I'll try to do two juz in one day inshallah ta'ala. So that way we can uh, really be on, on, uh, on, on, uh, on course inshallah. So jazakallah khairan. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please do share the video. Uh, with your friends and family and tune in tomorrow inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.